Hey, deserving listeners, the ultimatum. Let's watch. I don't think a lot of people would accept someone staying out all night and coming home drunk, smelling like the club, smelling like perfume, and he expects me to just like accept that and be okay. I was so pissed when he came home, I literally punched him. That's concerning as well. So to catch you up, they had a fight. It wasn't terrible. He felt hurt, which was reasonable because she was saying she didn't necessarily want to get married or she wanted to rescind, she wanted to pull back her ultimatum that she gave earlier and say, well, I don't know if, I, and he was like, I, I'm ready to get married. So, you know, he was hurt and he wanted to get out of the house, which is fine. And, uh, but he was uh, very passive aggressive about it in that he didn't say, honey, I, I'm hurt. I gotta, I gotta go out with my friends. I'll, I'll be back. I'm sorry. Instead, he was ignoring her. She's trying to talk to him. And then he stayed out not only till two, which she said would have been fine. He, he came back at eight. He came back. She was upset. He acted like, how come you're upset? And then he was trying to, and then she's like, I'm done with this. I can't stand this situation. And then he, and, and she tried to get away. And then he was trying to physically restrain her and she multiple times said, don't touch me, don't touch me, get off, don't touch me, leave, leave me alone, I, let me leave the room, all that kind of stuff, very, very concerning stuff. And, but all that footage was from a camera that was in, installed in their apartment and wasn't one of the, it, the camera crew wasn't there. And so it was very concerning to see that. And she even said, that we heard, we heard her say, you don't want me to hit you, you know, get off me, I'll, you know, I'm gonna hit you. And remember what happened last time, you got really angry. And I'm thinking, oh, this happens multiple times. It is very, very concerning. So then in the interview, she says, I'm, I was upset that he came home drunk. And so I hit him. That is not a description of what happened. <laughs> It's not a full description of what happened. So I don't know. We'll see. But there's a chance that she is scared to tell the truth about what he did because she's, I don't know about them, but I, I will talk about other relationships where, and other, and clients that I've worked with where uh, victims of abuse will be worried about telling people, including the authorities, because they are worried that once the authorities leave, the abuser is going to abuse them more, maybe even kill them. Again, I don't think that's true about these two, a threat of death or anything like that. At least there's no indication of that. But that can be a real thing. At the very least, you would be worried that your partner would become very intimidating and angry, and that can be very scary. And so you would, upon being asked, leave all that out or even blame yourself. So she just, the summary of what she just said is she's the abusive one. He came home drunk or smelling like this and that. And I was so upset I hit him. So if we just look at that, if we just, if, if we didn't have that camera and that, it's not a hidden camera, but it's a 24 a seven camera. If we didn't have that camera, we'd say, whoa, Ray is abusive and Zay is a victim. But we saw the full scenario and we would not characterize it that way. So given that she said that, I'm, it gives me even more worry because does she feel safe to tell what really happened? That he put hands on when she said, don't touch me? That he prevented her from leaving the apartment? That he wouldn't leave her alone? That's, that makes me worry a lot. Sorry I hit you earlier. Regardless of what you were or weren't doing, I just can't deal with someone being out all night and- So worrisome. The cameras show up and they know that, that the day of or maybe later that day. And her, she sits down and says, I'm sorry I hit you. That's the, that's the entirety of what's happening right now. Now, maybe Zay will say, well, 
I'm sorry that I restrained you multiple times and refused and abusively refused to listen to you say, don't touch me. That was on, that's on me. So yeah, you shouldn't have hit me, but really I shouldn't have been restraining you. I shouldn't have been preventing you from leaving the room when you wanted to leave. I shouldn't have, I should have listened to you when you said, don't touch me. That's very, very wrong of me. So let's see what Zay says. Not answering their phone and not coming in until like 8.15 in the morning. I called you like four times. I texted you twice and you just didn't answer. Um, I don't have to lie to you, you know. And your not, location not wasn't working and you weren't texting back. So if you're really just hanging out with your friends, I don't see why it would be off. And like why you wouldn't be responding to me. Right. So Zay is saying, well, I don't have any reason to lie to you. I don't know if, I mean, you would if you accidentally cheated, or not accidentally, but drunkenly cheated on, on her. Either way, to turn off your location sharing, to not respond to texts and calls, and come home and, and stay out all night long when you've never done that before, you know, she has every reason to be concerned about that. And, you know, he could say, look, I didn't do anything, so what's the big deal? Well, to do those things, even if she believes you, it's it's a hostile act. You don't want someone in that mindset all night long where they're like, what's happening? Are they cheating on me? Are they dead? Like to put someone in that mindset for that long of a time can really do a lot of damage. I've been trying this hard. You think I want to just go out and fucking cheat or something like you think? Yeah. I'm like so sketched out. I don't even want you to touch me because I'm worried about where you've been. I don't listen. I don't have to lie, nor do, do I have to Okay, then let's she, say that you were saving she, puppies from a burning building all night. Let's say that. You still didn't text me back all night. Right, exactly. So, okay, let's say you didn't cheat, but you didn't text me back, and you stayed out till 8 a.m., and it seems like a clear indication of hostility towards me, indirect hostility. You're trying to hurt me. You were hurt by me saying that I wanted to be with you, but I wasn't sure about marrying you now or I needed more time before I could again re-engage with my want to be engaged. And you turn off your location sharing, like those are, you could have you could have stayed out all night and responded to my texts and left your location sharing on. Or come home. Well, I wanna apologize for last night. I think that that was, hard for me to hear and I just really want to just escape in any type of way that I could. Good, it's a beginning and I was hoping we would get here. We've seen Zay able to do things like this. And by the way, I don't know about Zay, but often in our society, when we talk about abusive individuals, pe people who exhibit, let's, just not, let's not label them abusive, let's just say they have a tendency at times when triggered to exhibit abusive behavior, commit abusive behavior. In our society, we tend to look at them as dirtbags, as horrible, evil human beings, and people that we would never have empathy for, and people that you obviously would leave because why would you stay in a relationship like that? The vast majority of perpetrators of intimate partner aggression that I have treated are very likable, lovable people but they have a problem, which is a, they are easily triggered to feel hurt attachment-wise, and they've learned from society or their parents that putting hands on is the solution or coercion is the solution. And they need to, one, shed that belief that they have an entitlement to other people's bodies. It can take a long time to deprogram that, and they have to heal from their attachment injuries such that they don't exaggerate the hurt that they're going through at the time. So, but they're human beings usually. Now there are psychopaths that are abusive people, but they're a very, very small minority. And Zay could be, Zay seems to be exhibiting that. Thus far, I've been really proud of Zay and his ability to be differentiated and caring and emotional. You know, I, I think he's, the person who's cried the most on this show. He is sensitive. Um, he likes to talk about feeling, he likes to express love and he's open about that. 
uh, more so than maybe anyone else on the show. So he has a lot of good qualities, a lot of strengths. He's a he's a good person, and we saw in no uncertain terms that he was being abusively restraining to Ray. And right now he is apologizing because he has empathy. You can have empathy. Most people who exhibit and commit abusive behavior have empathy. That's something you, you everyone really needs to understand. One, because it helps to understand why your friends are still in an abusive relationship. It helps to also you to, when you're in a relationship, you can some, it can sometimes be confusing because you're like, well, but he's not the way society paints abusive people. He's, he's a nice, loving person. He just loses control sometimes. No, that's the, that's the prototype of the abusive person is someone who is loving and caring and has values and has morals and cares about you and makes you feel loved. They also can become abusive and uh, escalate down a road of becoming more and more coercive, abusive, controlling. Anyway, so, but anyway, Zay is saying something that is extremely healthy and I'm guessing is absolutely the core of the matter and being vulnerable. And he's saying, I was hurt last night and I overreacted, essentially. But, I mean, that's not an excuse. Like, I, just, I just want you to trust me. I've really been trying. I know you don't think I was trying, but I was. Look at me. He's trying to make it work. She's trying to make it work. Again, we see him expressing himself more, her lack of eye contact, looking down. That's more of a avoidant attachment and or an introverted presentation. So, uh, we're seeing a similar dynamic, but it's going a lot better. I hope that they can talk about what happened in its entirety in terms of him restraining her multiple times. I hope that she feels safe enough. I mean, it's all out there now that the show has been aired, so maybe it helps her. No. I mean, you, you sat here and you haven't looked me in my eyes once. You haven't, you know, like, come on now, like, you have to understand. And now it paints everything with a new light. I don't know, but I've been interpreting her as more introverted, perhaps more avoidantly attached, more reserved. There's a possibility that it's still true, but it also might not be true. And all of her demeanor of lack of eye contact and reserved and being careful could be her terrified of triggering him. We have to add that to the list of hypotheses for sure. So, oof, hard to watch. I've been really, really trying. I've been trying. Sometimes I just do want to get just fuck, fucked up and forget about everything. This is ridiculous. What can I do? Because I really want, I, I mean, I- I mean, fucking stay home and answer your phone. It's not, I don't understand babe. like what, what? This is not who we are. I was so upset. I literally swung on you. She's saying, I, I was so upset. I swung on you, I, I hit you. Okay, let's talk about that for sure. But are we gonna talk about the fact that it could even be legally justified given the fact that you were being restrained and uh, uh, there was a massive threat there and it, you were multiple times over the span of a couple minutes saying, don't touch me, get out of my way, I wanna leave, like, ugh. I don't think we've ever seen something like this. We, I remember watching Nicole and Azan and Nicole putting hands on. I, uh, that was upsetting to watch for sure. But I didn't worry about Azan as much as I'm worried about Ray right now. We saw Angela and Michael, Angela being physical with Michael. And I, I did worry about Michael quite a bit, but n not as much as I'm worried about Ray. Uh, we saw Danielle being uh, abusively stalking of Muhammad toward the end. And again, I, I thought it seemed to me like Muhammad had the ability to assert himself and make himself get to a safe place. But seeing this, given what we saw 
And then given that she's not even mentioning it now, maybe, who knows, she's like, look, I already talked with him about it. It was off camera. He admitted he was wrong. The cameras show up. We're rehashing it, but we're leave- we agreed to leave it out because I don't want to humiliate him. But I definitely feel safe enough to talk about that sort of thing. And he did recognize it was wrong. And so maybe that happened. I guess I hope that happened. I punched you. Like, that's not who we are. That's not what we do. I felt like it was dumb to say that you were ready for an engagement and then stay out all night and not come home. That shows me that you're not ready. I don't want to do this. I'm sorry, baby. And I was trying to leave here with you. He's saying he's sorry. I think he is sincere. I would hope he could apologize for everything in an elaborate manner. Maybe he'll eventually do that. And they're hugging. He's hugging her once again. And she's not responding. So, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I just want to be done. I just want to go home. I'm done. I don't know what to say. I mean, two years, <laughs> two and a half years coming to... It's fucking crazy how eight weeks can change your whole fucking life, right? He's saying, or she's saying she's done. I think what she's saying is she wants to break up. And now he's, it's sinking into him that maybe their relationship is over. I will say that if that was the only problem, which I don't think it is, well, what do I say? I think someone would be, would be completely justified in ending a relationship with someone that it sounds to me on multiple occasions, at least two, where they were restraining you while you were saying, get off me, stop touching me. It, that That's a huge red flag. And if you didn't see any kind of acknowledgement in the individual that they had a problem and they need to go to treatment, then it would be, it, it would be completely justified to leave that person, 100%. Could you stay and also pressure to go to therapy or put safety measures in place so that you would be able to protect yourself and and feel safe. Yeah, for sure. But aside from that, it is a bit of a tragedy that they even had a fight in the first place, independent of the course of behavior, that she was just saying, look, we've had some issues and I'm not I'm not ready to commit to engagement, but I, but I am still on that road. So I just need, I just need a little bit of time. And it sounded to me like, I don't know, maybe a couple months or something. And that triggered him so greatly. Well, so it triggered him and then he uh, overreacted slightly. And then he went in for a hug and she didn't want to hug him back either because she was sick or because she was being passive aggressive and or because she didn't love him anymore. I don't know, it, uh, looking back, given her demeanor today, maybe that was the case. Maybe she was just reckoning with the fact that maybe she didn't love him anymore. I don't know. But if she did love him and he was hugging her and he could hug her, or at least some kind of gesture, because just, you know, if you've ever been in those shoes, like you reach out to hug someone and they just don't even They just, like, they're stiff as a board. That's, you know, it's pretty hurtful. So, but she says she didn't feel well, which would make sense. But, you know, she could have been like, okay, I'm going to hug you, but I don't feel well. And then he gets really triggered, which makes sense. And he disappears all night long. And, yeah, I mean, if without the abuse of control, I would say that, if that was all that the conflict was about, it would be, to me, a missed opportunity for the two of them to have a good relationship. Because I've, I've seen that we've seen the two of them communicate in very healthy ways. But then when you add the abusive, you know, coercive control in there, it, it throws the whole thing in a different light. Can you please stay? No. It's worth talking about the dynamic between preoccupied and avoidant attached individuals. So to the preoccupied person, they can be much more reactive, much more easily triggered, much more prone to anger, and 
in a in rare cases prone to control as a as a desperate act of trying to retain closeness with someone and the avoidant person will in a um, in under stressful situations will isolate not only by not having eye contact but also by shutting down by trying to separate physically and that could be a flashpoint for some couples where the preoccupied person will refuse to let the avoided person leave. And number one, when I work with couples like that, we, I absolutely lay down a rule and even point out that it's potentially criminal to do that to someone and say that has to stop. But the avoidant person also has a responsibility to a lesser extent, far lesser extent, to inform the preoccupied person, I need to take a break, but I will come back, and this doesn't mean I wanna leave you. A lot of avoidant people will never say that, partially because they don't think to, but also because they're trying to send a passive aggressive message that I didn't like what you just did. So I think we might be hearing from the two of them that that often would happen with the two of them. Can you not talk to me? I know you might. Can you please talk to me real quick, please? I love you. He's continuing to try to reach out in a, a non-abusive way. He's being non, he's not being coercive. He's like, can you, can you please, can we talk about it? I, I, you know, that's fine. Great. And then he says, I love you. Now, if the cameras weren't there, what would be happening? Because we saw a very, very different dynamic from the camera that I don't know if they remembered was there or I don't know. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.